so stick around. I'm about to share some more YouTube secrets, and they're coming up next. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Jeff here from YouBackTube. Tonight we're going to cover some really important topics, so stay tuned. I have some top secret information to share with you today that I got directly from one of the head developers of the YouTube Analytics team. Okay, let's get this party started. We're going to fix your thumbnails, okay, because if you're not uploading HD thumbnails, you're not getting the click. If you're not getting the click, you're not getting views. If you're not getting views, you're not getting any watch time, and it snowballs into your channel and your video's not really going anywhere. So the first thing you have to nail down, as we talked about in previous episodes, is getting your thumbnails to look great. They have to be HD quality. They have to be graphically aesthetic. They have to look cool they have to make people want to click you have to learn the art of clickbait using a thumbnail so we're going to cover that tonight I'm going to show you the software I use how I set it up how I make my thumbnails really fast how I test them and make sure they look right before I upload them and we're going to go a little deeper into the YouTube analytics tonight because I found some really cool stuff that's going to blow your mind All right, now let's get right down to it. I'm gonna do my best here. I have my cat on my lap. I have three cats. They're trying to bug me while I'm working, which is something they do quite often. Don't know if you have that problem or not, but I'll do my best to stay focused and make sure she doesn't make any noise here for us. Now, um, before we get into this, I have just wanna answer a question I've been getting asked a lot. How do you make boxes for your product? like I've been showing in my latest couple videos, like this one. Well, you need what's called eCover Creator Software, and you basically get a template for the box, and you just put your images on it in the software. I have one. It's called the VendorLock eCover Builder. Okay, this is my personal software that I created. Okay, and I'm going to give it to you at the end of this video for watching till the end. Okay, that's your special gift for watching to the end. Basically, you can just apply an image to the front, apply an image to the side, apply an image to the top. You can pick different templates, boxes, CD packs, stuff like that. You can set the size, shading, shadows, all sorts of cool stuff. Really one click easy stuff here, and then you just click on save picture, and you've created a box or an image for your product that looks like this 3D box with a shadow and everything. Okay, so we'll give you that software at the end of this video just for watching till the end. If you're enjoying these highly detailed video tutorials I've been creating for you to help you succeed with your online business and YouTube, and you also enjoy the secret inside information that I've been sharing, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can do that with the button below this video. Also, click the bell so you get notifications of my next super awesome free video. And hey, do me a favor and punch that like button. <laughs> so let's get right into it here. Um, this is uh, one of the. This is the first thumbnail actually for this video series that I created. Now this is one of my best performing ones so far. So I thought it would be a good example. Okay. Now let's take a brief look at how it looks overall it's very bright okay bright is good okay it's very simple I have a bomb on the front basically saying I triggered the YouTube algorithm and the guy's face is like oh my god I can't believe it okay so shock and surprise you want shock and surprise and you want clear printing you'll notice that I didn't do anything fancy with the I triggered the YouTube algorithm. It has a light blue edge around it and black printing on a plain yellow background. I originally had this area with a patch behind it and I found I had to remove the patch to make it a better thumbnail. Okay, I'll tell you why in a second here as we break it down and then I'm going to show you how to make one really quick and then you can do this in any software at all like uh, Coral Draw or Photoshop or any of your favorites. I'm using my personal favorite right now but it's no longer available to the public. But the good news is the company that makes this software you're seeing now 
now is about to release their newest product which is pretty much like this only it's got a lot more features okay so I'm gonna try to do a joint venture deal with them and deliver that software to you so you can have access to it very soon but for now just go ahead and use any editing software for for images you want uh, you can use free software you can use Photoshop whatever you can get your hands on okay there's a lot of them out there don't forget you're gonna get my eCover creator to make boxes and 3d images at the end of this video so stay tuned okay now let's take a look at what we have here okay basically we have a rectangle okay and that's what we need to start out with I chose yellow for this one I've been choosing bright colors for this whole series and this guy's face is um, really jumps out at you so I'm using that on this whole video series along with the bomb uh, with the trigger the YouTube algorithm so very shocking sounding words shocking images yet simple and not cluttered okay that's really really important because <laughs> Hey, it's Jeff here. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to remind you that I have some really valuable information to share with you that I got from one of the developers of the YouTube analytics team. So this is really key stuff I'm going to share with you. I know this video is a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I urge you to stick around because not only am I going to share that with you, but I'm going to give away some software and tell you about a really special package that I'm going to offer you at the end of this video that no one else on YouTube is doing we're making YouTube history today okay let's get back to it I found that if you make it too cluttered what happens is when people are looking at it on their phones the thumbnail is maybe an inch and a half wide at best maybe an inch wide and everything becomes super tiny okay so that's really important so I'm gonna show you something right now this one I can just zoom down here how big the image looks okay and I'm gonna go all the way down to 10 percent okay that's really tiny but I can still read the main headline I triggered the YouTube algorithm learn how and you can still see the impact of the image the bomb and the guy's face with his hands on his head like he's in shock plus you'll notice I put some really cool stuff on here that catches your eye I put a red dotted banner with um, some trim on it and I put these colored bar uh, squiggly bars here that really kinda jump out at you especially when it's bigger now you have to make your thumbnail look good for TV laptops desktops iPads and tiny little phones okay it has to look good for all of them so if you bring it up to full size I can't really go full size because I've got the software kinda of shrunk down to fit inside my screenshot right now I'm trying to make the right size screenshot here for the video so I've got my software just a little bit shrunk down so um, not good I've got it 75 percent um, but you can see the detail now it's really really high definition and that's really key is getting high definition so your images have to be high definition to start with okay if you're gonna put another image on your thumbnail it has to be a high def image okay but it's really easy to get those all you have to do let's say I'm doing a thumbnail on gardening so I'm just gonna go to Google and type in um, let's say plants okay I'm just gonna type that into Google and then I'm just gonna click on images at the top I'll just find something that works really well for maybe a uh, plain white backdrop and now here's what you want to look for when you mouse over them you want to make sure it's high definition okay so high definition is you know anything that's over a thousand pixels wide okay so this one would probably work okay we could use that image this one's definitely high definition but it's got a strange backdrop I don't want to use um, let's just keep looking here for a sec this is how I do it if I want an 
image to match my idea. I basically look for something that really suits what I'm trying to portray in the thumbnail. Sometimes, and maybe this is good for me to show you, you have to be more specific. Um, let's put transparent background. Okay, and now we've got some images with transparent backgrounds. And hey, look at this one. This one looks really cool. And it's definitely high definition. It's big enough. It's over a thousand pixels wide. And it's got, if you see the checkered background, that's definitely the type of image that has a transparent background. It's got some uh, watermarks, so maybe we won't use that one. Let's go look at something better. This wouldn't work. It's too small. This is too small as well. Um, this might work. It's 800. You know, we're not going to cover the whole thumbnail with the image, so th this might work. Um, let's just take a look at it. Yeah, I kind of like this fern thing, actually. This is pretty cool. And it's, it's almost a thousand pixels. Now, if we're going to make it high def, this might not stretch across the whole thumbnail. It's too small. High definition, we want over a thousand pixels wide. Okay, but I'm just going to download this any, anyway, so save image as, and I'll just call it Lance. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'll go back to my software here, and I'm going to create a brand new thumbnail so you can see how I do it. Okay, I'm going to start out from the very beginning and show you how quick and easy it is to make something that looks this cool when you upload it on YouTube. It really catches your eye. Okay, now this is really important. Your high definition thumbnail must be this dimension to be considered a high definition thumbnail on YouTube. It has to be 1280 pixels wide, 720 pixels tall. Okay, so go ahead and make all your thumbnails that size. I have this set up to make it that way for all my th thumbnails as soon as I open one. So now I have a blank slate to work with here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a bright color on here because this is actually a transparent background. It's not white. Okay, I could put a white rectangle here, but this isn't white yet. It's transparent. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a rectangle as my backdrop. Okay, so on my software, I'm just going to click on my rectangle tool, and I'm going to make a rectangle that fits over the entire backdrop. The center, let's make it nice and bright. Okay, it's easy to match stuff. Okay, and these colors really stand out on YouTube. Okay, so especially the red, people love red on YouTube. In fact, you know what? Let's just go with red. All right? So let's try to fly through this. Now I've created a red rectangle on my backdrop. Simple, simple. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. And I'm going to use that image that we just downloaded. Okay? And now it's going to let me paste it wherever I want. So I'm just going to paste it on the I'll paste it on the right side. Now the reason I like to use the right side for images more um, and the left side for text is because when it on YouTube you get that little thing down here that shows how much how long the video is and that could cover up something really important on text so I like to put the text over on this side but that's just me you can do whatever you want and I like to switch it up okay so I'm gonna move this image and put it wherever I think is best. I think I'll put it right near the edge and that way I can put a border around this thing and have this hanging over the border. It'll look cool. Overlapping stuff looks really cool. So now we have an image on a red backdrop. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add some text, okay? And I'm going to use my text tool and I'm going to make it nice and big and I'm going to put um, guard gardening oops tips for newbies okay now it doesn't quite fit there so I'm just gonna move it a little bit and oops moved it too far bring that back down where we want it there centered okay and uh, I could move the, the the shrub a little bit or I could shrink the text a little bit, which is what I think I'm going to do in this case. 
Okay, now I don't want to go too small, but I can go a little shorter like that, and now it fits. Okay, and I'm also going to make it bold. Okay, so it stands right out. Okay, that's really, that's got a high impact already. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. You always want to go as big as you can and still make it look nice. Okay, don't go right near the edge uh, because on some devices it might get cut off a little bit. Okay, so there's something really cool. Now, I'm, let's say I want to do um, 10 tips to get started today. Okay, so I'm going to make that stand out a little bit more. Maybe I'll use a um, some sort of badge or background. Let's use a, hey, let's use a petal shape since it's a, a gardening thing, right? Now I can adjust how this thing looks. Overlap them a little bit. Whatever I want to do to it, I can manipulate it several ways in this software. I um, think I want to go the other way, actually. Don't want them overlapping so far. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, and then let's make it bright yellow. So I'll click on the yellow button over here and make it bright yellow. And uh, I'm going to make the edges blue. So I'll click on the outside line edge, make it blue. And I'm going to uh, thicken up the line a bit so that it looks kind of a little more there we go that's pretty much what I was looking for and uh, I think I can adjust the see I can make all these really cool things ow wow that looks really cool I think I might actually use that <laughs> that's pretty cool see I love just experimenting with the software when I make stuff it's part of the creativity right so now I have this patch here that really stands out Okay, so now I can put something on there. Um, maybe I'll have the plant overlap it, so I'll just bring the plant to the front. I'll click on bring to front, and now it overlaps the the patch thing. kind of like that. That looks cool. Maybe I'll move this over just a little bit more. It can hang off the edges just a hair. And this I can maybe make it a little more circular so it's not getting covered up quite so much. That looks pretty crazy. I like it. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put more text on top of this. And I'm going to say uh, 10 tips to get started today. Okay. And now I'm just going to make this look a little neater. Oops. Um, by making it bold and centering it within the text box. Okay, and then I'm just going to make it a little bigger so that it fits on there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now just center it up a little better here. Okay, there we go. We got a good start. All right, now let's do the test. Let's shrink it down. You got to go all the way down to 10%, in my opinion to really test if you can read it or not. Can we read it? Gardening tips for newbies, yes. 10 tips to get started part is a little hard to read. See how important it is to test it at a small, small scale? Okay, so what am I going to do about this? I'm going to make this smaller, make this bigger, move it over just a bit so it's not off the page. I'm going to make this um, go over here and maybe I'll put it to the other side so that it fits the profile of the page a little better. Okay, and maybe just make that a hair bigger while we're at it because it looked a little small when I shrunk it down. So make it everything bigger. Okay, I like to do this with the font right away um, before I get crazy with the design and, and then get disappointed because I have to move everything again. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. And maybe if I make it a little taller and just move it down and over just a bit, 
move this down and over just a bit. Okay, and that will allow me to go just a hair bigger with the text even. Okay, so now we've rearranged it a little bit and made the text much bigger. Let's go down to 10% and see what it looks like now. Okay, now, even at the tiniest of tiny, I can read both from a distance. Gardening tips for newbies, 10 tips to get started today. Okay, really cool. Now, the bush is a little hard to see, but it's just there for aesthetics. It's not really there for the tiny thumbnail because when it's tiny, the, the details of the image don't matter so much. Clarity of the text matters, okay? So s keep it simple. Keep it really simple, and then you'll find that you'll do better. You'll get more clicks, okay? Because everything's going to look really cool when it's full size. All right, now let's put a border on this thing. I'm going to take my rectangle tool again, and I'm going to put another rectangle on this thing right over the top and I'm going to um, go to colors and I'm going to make the center transparent and that just made it invisible but the outside edge is still blue okay I like the blue um, let's brighten it up a little bit oops wrong one click on that go to the bright blue um, okay let's thicken that line up a little bit that looks pretty cool. I like that already. Um, let's try breaking it up into dots. I like doing the dots. It really catches people's eye, I find. Make sure that it fits on the page. You can have it hanging off just a little bit, but it will get cut off when you create the image. And I actually do that on purpose sometimes just to get an effect where something's hanging off just a little bit like I could take for example I could take this thing here and make it look like that and when I render the image it's gonna cut it off here okay so that's up to you what you wanna do with your stuff okay I'm gonna make this just a hair bigger okay and I'll make this just a hair smaller this way just so it doesn't touch okay so there we go we got a pretty cool thumbnail um, I could add a lot to this obviously I could get a little more high tech with it I could put in some more plants I could put some outlining on these on this lettering in fact I'll try that right now just to see what it looks like I'm gonna add some white to the edge of the text and I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, a little yeah see I don't like it see it's good to test stuff I I think it looks cool but it takes away from the impact and I'll bet you when we make it small it's harder to read now yeah it is okay and I like to test this stuff when it's small look watch what happens when I tra change that back to black okay um, watch how much sharper the text gets where it says gardening tips for newbies you see that? Look how much better that looks. And it's just plain and simple. Okay, it has to work for the small thumbnail size. So make it work text wise so you can read it, so you can see it. And don't worry so much about the image, what it looks like when it's tiny. Okay, now when you've got it bigger for laptops, computers, and TV sets, you can worry about how cool it looks alright but it has to be eye-catching so try to use bright colors okay now I think the bright red is a little too much so what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it a little more transparent and just a little bit lighter on the red maybe a little more pinky so it's halfway between pink and red here and then I'm just gonna take a look at how this looks when it's really small and yeah I kinda like that a little better I mean I could go back to the red if I wanted to I'll just try that out and just by holding control and click Z that will undo any last change you did on almost any software just so you know and hitting control Y will put it back again so you can compare um, pink red pink I think I'll stick with the red kinda like it okay so there's our first thumbnail now if you notice this is a little close to the top 
So I'm going to make it just down a little bit here and move that over just a little bit. So see now it fits on the page just a little better for the tiny thumbnail. Now I'll go a little bit bigger and see how it might look on a laptop or something. Probably be about this big right here, 15% or so. Okay, that's about how big they are on a laptop. If you get into a bigger screen computer, they get a little bigger. And then, of course, television, they're quite big. Depends on the size of the TV. I've got the software shrunk down just a little bit, so it doesn't let me fit it on the full page here. Okay, so there you go. That's how I created a thumbnail. It has to be 1,280 pixels wide and... Uh, 720 pixels tall. Okay, I'll just write this right on here for you so you know uh, what we're talking about. Okay, so it has to be 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall. Okay, now I'll just move that up here so you can actually see it. Alright, that's the size of this thumbnail and that's what size you should make all of them okay so now to make this into an image I just basically on my software I just hit control R and it lets me create it into an image and you'll see that there's you know nothing hanging off the edge because it gets cut okay so it's been cut right around the image if I left something hanging off which I'll just do briefly just to show you what it looks like when you do that um, let's say I took this text and this yellow thing and hung it off the edge like this. Okay, now you can still see the whole thing and you can see it sticking out, but when you go to create the image, it's going to get chopped and it gives it that kind of hanging off the edge look. Okay, maybe you want that. In fact, for fun, I think I will go with that. And what that will allow me to do, it, it will also allow me to make this bigger. Okay, so there we go. We just improved the readability of it some more. So let's go down to 10% one more time just to take a quick look at it. And yeah, that's way easier to read. Okay, so I'll just make it a bit bigger and then we're going to go ahead and make it into an image. So I'm just going to save as, okay, and it's going to let me make this into an image. I'm going to save it as a Portable Networks Graphic Image PNG. They are usually the best quality for making thumbnails of this size, okay? So use PNG as your format, not JPEG. You can use JPEG, you can if you want, uh, JPG, whatever you want, but I'm telling you PNG looks the best on YouTube, okay? It does, and it's got a lot of um, high def, like the bit depth, you can go up to 32, whereas a JPEG, you can only go up to 24, okay? So it's much better to use PNG type format to create your image, okay? And then you just hit on mine, I just hit export, and then I'm going to save image as, and I'm going to call it new thumbnail for my video. And then I'm just going to hit save. And done. I've created a high def thumbnail for my video. And now when I upload the video, I'll have this image ready to do my gardening tips for newbies. Okay, so it's that simple, folks. It really is that easy. And don't forget, I'm going to give you this software at the end of this video so you can go ahead and make uh, boxes and stuff that um, look like this. Okay? And you can put your product and your images on the box. And there's a lot of different templates. You can make DVD covers. You can make a box with a DVD sitting in front of it. You can make a bunch of different ones. Okay? So hang in there. I'm going to give you this software absolutely free just for being one of my subscribers. Please take a moment to comment below this video and tell me what your biggest obstacle is in creating high definition thumbnails and I will come back and reply to your question, I promise. 
I've been really looking into the YouTube analytics lately and I've got some inside information I'm going to share with you today coming directly from one of the head developers of the YouTube analytics team. Now I listen to what these people are saying because I'm a software developer, I developed UBackTube and of course it works with the YouTube API. So I listen to what these people are saying, I know who they are, I even watch their videos um, and sometimes I get things out of the videos even that nobody else is going to know about. So it's key to watch my videos and subscribe to my channel, click the bell because I always share some secret stuff like I'm going to share today. First of all, one of the things he revealed to me that I've never heard before is that YouTube actually checks on your channel once a month. Okay, I, and it could be a random day, kind of like they do with uh, radio playlists. Okay, they check on your channel once a month and they give it a little test. Okay, and to me, that kind of means they are putting it out there in the suggested videos and stuff for you, your videos, to see how they do. Okay, now if they fail, then you kind of didn't do yourself any good. So you have to keep improving your channel because it's going to come check on you again next month and you need to have improved if YouTube's going to start putting your videos in suggested videos more often. Okay? So listen to what these people say. First of all, I didn't know that before, but I started looking through my analytics and I actually found some data that represents that exact thing. So here you can see this video didn't do well okay because it went into suggested videos for only one day okay and it was just random because this video is really old and it's got a lot of views but it's not a well-made video I could have done better with it it was a tutorial that I didn't make a lot of nice edits in and stuff and it was kinda of boring so people drop off early and it doesn't do well for my watch time and the thumbnails not great I could update that but it's not great at the moment and it gets a poor click-through rate we learned today in thumbnail school that you have to have a great looking high impact thumbnail high impact with the words and high impact with the images shocking even and bright colors has to be high definition and if you don't do that you don't get clicks well I I'm don't have a good thumbnail on this video it doesn't have a good hook it doesn't pull people in it gets very poor watch time and so you can see that it goes up in to suggested videos randomly one day out of the month here it shows 29 views from suggested videos just out of the blue so that proves exactly what he's talking about he said that it is a once a month check thing and here is proof of it and you can see the next day back to zero with suggested videos so in other words the algorithm which is now basically artificial intelligence didn't like the way my video was performing okay so my other new videos like this series I'm doing now is doing great but my old video there not so great so you have to improve your whole scheme your whole channel once a month because they check on your channel they're not checking on one video okay so you have to delete your crappy videos you have to unlist them you have to clean up your playlist which is really important and I didn't really realize how important it was until I went ahead and did it and I'm gonna do a whole video on that so stay tuned to this channel because I'm gonna share a lot of cool stuff with you the other thing I learned from this same conversation is that basically YouTube is artificial intelligence and they introduce models and they can update stuff but when it comes to learning about you and what you're doing with your channel and your videos and how well you're putting yourself into your content and your uploading skills and and adding things to the video um, to make it professional when it comes to that it's basically artificial intelligence that's judging you okay the other thing is 
it updates itself. So it learned, it, he said it can learn from itself faster than we can learn. So by looking at people's past video views and what they like and what they're into, they can go ahead and predict what people are going to like and be into. And they can predict if a video is going to be appropriate for that one person. Okay, now the algorithm does this on its own. Okay, it's basically artificial intelligence. So you have to perform because now there is a supercomputer checking all the fine details and you have to be doing better next month or you're not doing better next month. And if you're not doing better next month, you don't go anywhere for the rest of the month. And that explains a lot. That explains why small channels don't do well because they didn't improve that video or the new videos or upload enough new videos with those improvements in them and go back and fix the old videos or get them out of there and do channel cleaning like we did in episode one okay if you don't do that stuff when the algorithm the YouTube supercomputer let's just call it for people that don't understand how servers work and stuff let's just call it a supercomputer it comes and checks on you once a month and if you're not doing any better than last month it goes back to checking on somebody else YouTube has big problems too okay we're not the only ones with problems YouTube has to face the problems like a million videos get uploaded to their servers per day or more that's crazy. Can you imagine trying to manage that data? That's insane. Now, the other thing they have to deal with is fairness. Okay, people are out there using bots and cheating and trying to manipulate the system so that they can make huge financial gains. This is a problem. They've created a monster in a lot of areas and they're really trying to make it fair. So don't be mad at YouTube, okay? Be mad at yourself if your videos and your channel aren't doing well. To get the eCover Creator software shown earlier in the video, simply share this video on Facebook and then comment below with your link to the share that's on Facebook and I'll come back and reply to you within a day or so and give you a link for a free download copy of the VendorLock eCover Builder software so you can create those really cool e-cover boxes for your product or service. Next week on Tube Subscribers for the UbackTube channel learn about branding. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications so you get my next free awesome video, and of course comment on one of the videos so that you get a free copy of UbackTube software. And also if you do share this video on Facebook and then drop a link in the comments below, I'll give you that free eCover software right away. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch the last episode or the next episode, you can click on the thumbnails shown on your screen now.